Hello, yes, six. Another busy day ahead of us in Jerusalem today. Our final day in Jerusalem, looking at why the city is so important to Muslim people. So first lesson we did in Jerusalem, we looked at why the city was important to Jewish people as the home of the original temple, the center of Judaism for uh, kind of 5,000 years, depending on who you speak to, and also the Western Wall being the remaining site of that original or second temple. Uh, we also looked at the Christian uh, importance of Jerusalem, the fact that Jesus died there, the fact that according to Christian belief, Jesus resurrected and ascended into heaven from there, uh, and the fact that they can visit many of those sites, including the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Um, and today we are going to look at why Jerusalem is so important to Muslim people. Uh, so let's do that. Before we leave the hotel, we are going to take a look at a map again so we can get our bearings. Last lesson, we mostly concentrated here in the Christian quarter, although we went out uh, here to the Mount of Olives. Uh, the lesson before that, we were in the Jewish quarter, and today we find ourselves in the Muslim quarter. And in particular, we are going here to the Temple Mount, also known as Haram al-Sharif, uh, which is, it used to be the Jewish temple until 70 AD, when the temple was destroyed, and now it is home to uh, primarily Muslim uh, buildings, Although, as we're going to learn, it's more complex than that. The Muslim uh, building, in particular the Dome of the Rock, is shared with Jewish people as well. It's a holy site for both religions. So before we get there, we're going to go for one last walk through these winding streets of the old city of Jerusalem. You've got people selling things everywhere. You've got food being prepared. You've got uh, so many different languages being spoken. And in the Muslim area, you're going to find people selling, again, Muslim clothes, Muslim prayer mats, Muslim books. Um, and also, as we're going to see here, you're going to see a different language as well. I wonder if you recognize this language from a couple of lessons ago. Well, this is Arabic and all around Jerusalem, you're always going to see Arabic. You're going to see Hebrew. You're going to see English. You might see French. You might see Russian. You might see Ukrainian. You're going to see all of these different languages, all of these different uh, groups of religious people uh, all living side by side. And so we've arrived at the entrance to Temple Mount. And you'll see here that these are uh, police barricades and police officers uh, who check who's going in and out of this complex. If you remember back to the first lesson, I said Jerusalem has always been the site of conflict. Uh, at one point, not that long ago, talking 50 years ago, um, this whole area was at war. There were bombings going on. There were people being taken hostage. Uh, Jewish people, Muslim people were fighting over who would get control of Temple Mount who would get control of the buildings, who would get control of the city. So to think that this is, um, you know, to, you can kind of understand why there's so much security there. So there are very strict rules about what you can bring in. Obviously, no weapons, but also if you're not Muslim, you're not allowed to bring in prayer books or any other kind of religious materials. This is to stop it from being a really controversial place. I mean, it is controversial anyway, but it's to stop it from there being arguments between Jewish people praying and Muslims people pray, Muslim people praying. So you'll see in a moment there is a special the Alaska Mosque where Muslim people can go to pray, but Jewish people are not supposed to pray on the Temple Mount. It's uh, against the rules that were set up by the, the authority that looks after it. So here's a, an aerial view to help us get our bearings. We've come in through this gate here, the Temple Gate, uh, and we will have wound through all these streets in the, in the Muslim quarter. And you come out into this big square. You know, the, the, if you remember the picture that we looked at of the temple, it's this kind of big rectangle, with look flat on top of a hill. You come out into this big square. And this first building that we're going to look at is called the Dome of the Rock. I would say that's probably the most famous building in Jerusalem. The thumbnail image that I've used for these videos on YouTube features the Dome of the Rock. If you search for Jerusalem on Google Images, you're going to find lots of pictures of the Dome of the Rock. And you can see that golden dome from all around Jerusalem. It's very visible. We're also going to see uh, the Al-Asqa Mosque, which is uh, the third holiest site in Islam uh, after Mecca and Medina. Uh, so that's going to be really important. And this here, you can just about make out, this is the Western Wall that we looked at in the first of our days walking around Jerusalem. You can see this is the area here where Jewish people go to pray. So you can see how everything here is interconnected and linked in with one another. So this is the Dome of the Rock. Oh, before I go any further, this uh, image here 
you need to fill in using the labels from the last slide. Sorry, I should have said that. So, this is the Dome of the Rock. What are your first impressions? Well, golden, again, bright, big, shiny, show-off, uh, impressive. The We're going to have a closer look at some of these tiles in a moment. They're very interesting, very impressive indeed. Uh, but yeah, it's obviously supposed to be a landmark. It's supposed to be a place that makes you stop and go, wow, this is an important religious site. And for Muslims and Jews, this is a very important site indeed. For Muslims, this is where they believe the Prophet Muhammad ascended into heaven. So similar to where we looked at Jesus on the Mount of Olives, for Muslims, this is where they believe that uh, Muhammad ascended into heaven. They also believe that Muhammad came here on the night journey and was brought here by angels to meet with prophets from the um, Jewish faith uh, and the Christian faith uh, and that he met with those prophets and he, in the process he became a prophet himself. So you can see why this is important to Muslim people. But it's also incredibly important to Jewish people as well. So the dome covers the foundation stone, which is the holiest site on earth for Jews. Uh, it was the foundation of the holiest part of the temple. Do you remember I showed you that image sitting here of the uh, Holy of Holies? The, no, it's not. Uh, the Holy of Holies was the site where Jewish people believed that God came down onto earth uh, in the Bible. The Christian Bible, it talks about the, the curtain between that and the rest of the temple uh, splitting when Jesus was crucified. Y you know, it doesn't get holier than this for Jewish people. This uh, is an image taken when they were reconstructing parts of the Dome of the Rock. But if you go inside the Dome of the Rock, you can still see this foundation stone. And you can see cut into here are bits of the old temple. So bits of where that temple stood. 2000 years ago and Jews around the world just like how Muslims pray in the direction of Mecca Jews pray in the direction of this stone and actually even Christian churches point tend to point in the direction of Jerusalem so most Christian churches in the UK are built facing east which is in the direction of Jerusalem and so this is the exterior of the dome covered in these beautiful Islamic tiles um, Muslim people don't depict human beings or even animals in their art. They believe that's uh, wrong. They believe that they couldn't do justice to the figures like the Prophet Muhammad, for example. So often you'll find mosques are decorated with repeating tile patterns. And the repetition of these tiles is actually linked into the Muslim belief that God goes on forever, uh, called Tawid. And these tiles also go on forever and ever and ever. And then here we've got what's called calligraphy. So calligraphy is Arabic, but it's very special Arabic. It tends to be verses from the Quran uh, written in a way that is not just text, but also decorative as well. So it's really stunning. And the whole building is covered in these tiles. Uh, quite remarkable, really. So the designs of repeating tiles show the Muslim belief that uh, God is infinite and goes on forever. Or Allah is infinite. And here we have more of the tiles inside the Dome of the Rock. Really uh, beautiful. They vary in age, but some of these are hundreds of years old. Uh, again, showing off that kind of Muslim belief in decorating without showing images of uh, humans or animals. OK, so the Dome of the Rock, as I said, is the an iconic building in both Islam and Judaism. We're going to look at some of the souvenirs and things that come from that. So this is an interesting one. This is from the 1890s. This is over 100 years old, 130 years old. It's a stereoscope, which is a kind of 3D image. So what you do is you have a sort of a viewer like this, uh, like a cardboard box or a wooden box, and you put the stereoscope card in, and each of your eyes sees one half of this, and it gives the impression of it being 3D. So even back in the 1890s, uh, the Dome of the Rock were featured in this kind of almost like tacky souvenir. This is um, a banknote from the Muslim country of Jordan. Uh, and you'll find often um, stamps and banknotes in Muslim countries feature the Dome of the Rock. And again, this all links into how people fought over it for years. So Muslims at the moment have control over this uh, part of the city of Jerusalem. And so for them, it's kind of a victory that they celebrate in their banknotes, celebrate in their stamps. 
But for Jewish people, they feel, for some of them, that they should have control over the Dome of the Rock. And so they feature the Dome of the Rock on their stamps and on their banknotes, showing that they also feel that sense of ownership. And it's that ownership, that desire to own these holy sites, that has led to so much conflict in Jerusalem. And that's what we're going to look at next lesson. We're going to go back hundreds of years to the Crusades, uh, when the city was fought over between Christians and uh, Muslim people. Here is a painting by a Jewish artist called Samuel Herzenberg uh, in 1908, showing the beautiful tiles, uh, the dome looking a bit less golden in those days, uh, and the peace and calm of the temple at the time with the fountain. I, I really like this painting. And finally, this is actually a really, really old um, book plate. So a book plate is what you put in the front of your books to show who you are. This is from Venice. This is a, an author showing to how much a Christian author from Venice showing how much they traveled around the world. This is about 500 or 600 years old. The text here is in Hebrew um, and this is a, an image of the Dome of the Rock. So it gives you some idea of the, the place that this building holds in the memory of Christian people, Jewish people and Muslim people. So nearby to the Dome of the Rock is the Al-Asqa Mosque, the third holiest site in Islam. Uh, and you can see here on the building lots of Arabic text, you can also see lots of the same repeating patterns that we saw on the Dome of the Rock. Not quite as an impressive building from the outside, but arguably for Muslim people at least, this is a more important building than the Dome of the Rock. Uh, it is only open to Muslims, so if you are a Muslim uh, and you would like to go inside, you can pray here like in any other mosque. Uh, and often Muslims will travel from around the world to come and pray in the Alaska Mosque to remember Muhammad being ascended into heaven. Uh, as happens at the end of the Hadith and the Quran. Um, but yeah, inside, it looks pretty much like you'd expect any other mosque to look. Uh, they're facing in the direction of Mecca. Uh, they are worshipping in this way. Uh, but you're only allowed to go in there if you're Muslim. So I wouldn't be allowed in there, for example. But uh, it's open for Muslims who want to go and pray. And there we go. So Jerusalem has both benefited and suffered from being so important to these three different religions. And next lesson, we're going to look at the way in which there has been conflict over the city. Arguably, Jerusalem wouldn't even exist if it wasn't for Judaism, Christianity and Islam. But also, people still even now die um, from the kind of conflict that happens in and around Jerusalem in the conflict between Israel and Palestine, uh, but also the conflicts between different types of Christians in Jerusalem, conflict between Jewish people and Muslims, between uh, Muslims and Christians, Jewish people and Christians. It's a tense place to live, um, but an important place. And if you ever get the chance to visit, you know, you'd be incredibly lucky to visit. Uh, I would love to visit Jerusalem one day. OK, so uh, for now, though, it's time to head back to the station. Uh, and get on a train to the airport and start our journey back to London. Uh, this is the railway station in uh, the new city of Jerusalem. You can see people here waiting for the tram that takes them to the old city of Jerusalem. And we are just about to get on that double-decker train again, head back to Ben Gurion Airport, hop on a plane, have some hummus and a pitta, head back to London. I hope you've enjoyed our whistle-stop tour of Jerusalem. Um, there are a couple of questions here. So why is the Dome of the Rock an important site for Jewish and Muslim people? And then just describe and label the different types of decoration going on on the Dome of the Rock here. And then next lesson, we're going to look at the different rulers of Jerusalem over the time and the Crusades. And that should be really interesting. And then the last lesson of this half term, we're going to do a sort of artistic, creative sketchbook lesson. And I've got some resources to help you out with that. So have a safe journey back to London. Uh, I'll see you next week. Have a great weekend. Speak to you then. Bye bye. Yes,